Hello, welcome to a construction video. So I don't usually do construction videos for the um, designer's choice die sets, but I thought this month's one um, is quite an in-depth kind of build sort of box. So I thought um, you might appreciate a separate construction video showing you how to put it together as well. Um, all of the pieces that I'm showing you like that I've already prepared, I've actually done a sped up video because I wanted to do a card making video to show how you can use some of the bits and pieces to make a matching card for the box and in that sped up video um, at the end I'll probably put something like to be continued or um, go and watch the construction video but I, I've just in that video made all of the pieces and then the actual construction will be in this video um, just so that you can kind of see all the bits you need to decorate and stuff in the sped up version but you'll get a proper in-depth construction here. Um, this is this month's die set. I will be doing an up close video showing you some other um, examples and the card and stuff as well uh, but and also actually in this die set you get the full set of instructions. It comes with a full set of instructions so you will be able to put it together as soon as you get it but I just thought I know a lot of people um, I do really appreciate these construction videos and it's the way that I would prefer to see um, something put together. I'd like to see someone put it together so um, hopefully this will be helpful to you. And look at the gorgeous folder that the designer's choice now comes in. It used to just be a white envelope, well the ones that I've been getting have just been a white envelope but you've now got a gorgeous patterned one that says designer's choice on the corner. And as always, the die set is... Oh, it even says what it is on the back, which is really nice. It's even got the name on the back. Um, and you also get, obviously, in its plastic sleeve, like it has been since the beginning. And you can put that in any, like, regular two-hole um, ring binder. Or, actually, if you got... I've, this is how I've been storing mine now. I know I told you a few... Um, up closes ago for the designer's choice that I was using a blue plastic um, ring binder well um, in the birthday event from Tonic they brought out their new uh, die storage folder that holds like A5 kind of sized um, pockets and magnetic sheets in there and I treated myself to one of those and the all of the designer's choice fit absolutely perfectly in there just as they come as well so if you got one of those um, I'm pretty I'm pretty certain they sold out very quickly and I'm not sure if they're going to be back in stock. I hope they are, but I'm not 100% sure. But um, they fit absolutely perfectly in those folders as well. So if you want like a proper, if you, yeah, if you wanted a proper uh, sturdy folder and you bought one of them, they fit absolutely perfectly. So anyway, let's get on with the construction of the box. So in your instructions, it tells you exactly how many of each piece that you need, which is brilliant. So to create, oh, this is actually for a coffee cup. Um, Hopefully you will have watched my up close video, that will probably go up first. Um, but it's to create this gorgeous three dimensional coffee cup so it looks like a takeaway coffee cup with the lid that comes off and even has a hole. You could put a straw in it if you wanted to as well. Um, and I, I think it just makes a really cute little um, gift package and you can always theme it to the season as well. Like if someone really loves like those pumpkin spice lattes, you could do it in really cool fall colours and have like leaves cascading down the side of it and all that kind of stuff. Or you can go for a really uh, branded kind of look if someone loves Costa coffee or Starbucks coffee. Um, you can really like tailor it towards whoever you're giving it to as well, which is really nice. Um, but so these are all the pieces that you need. So to create the base of this coffee cup, you need four of this piece, which you can use these panels to decorate if you want to, but you could just leave it plain. Or one of the ones that I'll show you in my up close video, I actually did the same colour on the same colour. So it strengthened the sides by adding the panel and uh, giving the little dotted detail, but it was just red on red um, for a, you know, a uh, more subtle kind of look. And I was kind of going for a Starbucks sort of cup look. And then also to do the bottom um, portion of the cup, you also need two of the octagons. There's a small octagon in the die set and you need two of these and that is the base of the coffee cup. So in whatever colour you want the base to be, you need all of these pieces. So four of these and then two of these. Then all of the rest of the pieces are to create the really cool uh, dimensional lid um, element of the box. So for that you are going to need, and obviously um, I've, I've shown you this way so that you cut the right pieces from the right colour because I followed this when I was doing it and I cut these two pieces which are the base for the 
um, cup. I cut them from the same colour that I cut the lid from because I wasn't really thinking um, and I thought that that was part of the lid and so then I had white pieces when I wanted a coloured piece so that's why I've told you it like that. Um, but so the rest of the pieces you need for the lid are one of these octagons which is like a skinny little frame that I've actually decorated it with Nouveau drops but it's a skinny frame that kind of neatens up the top of the lid. You need two of these pieces which just have this single hole in which is where you can put um, a real straw fits in there really nicely or if you oh yeah you can make it um, Christmas themed and put a candy cane in it a candy cane would poke out of that really nicely as well um, and you need two of these because one goes on the top and one goes on the inside to make the inside of the lid look really neat and hold all of the glue tabs nicely in place and then the finally for the main basis of the lid with all the little um, I don't know, ledges that it creates going down the side of it. You need four of this piece, which when I first saw this, I was like, how on earth? Like, why are you going to have four holes in the top of the lid? And I was looking at the picture of a made one and I was like, it doesn't have four holes in the top of the lid. And I was getting really confused. But the way this works is you stick all four of them together, but you put this piece on the top and then that lines up over one of the holes. So it doesn't matter that there's holes underneath here, but obviously you need the hole in there. So they had to make the die with a hole in. And then rather than um, like making you pay extra or, or cutting something else out of the die set to give you that same shape without the hole in, all you do is you just cut four of them and then you put this one over the top so you only have the one hole showing, which I thought was really clever. And then you also need four of this piece as well. I've already started folding some of them to save a bit of time, but you need four of this piece too. Um, so this creates an octagonal sort of tapered down to a smaller size um, takeaway coffee cup and it's a really ingenious design. So. Um, I will get on to showing you how to put it together. I'll do the base of it first because that is the most simplest part of it. So, if you look at all four of these pieces, I have folded them all already. All of the folds are away from you. So the pretty side that you've decorated, all of the folds are away from you for these ones. Um, and I've cut four of these and you can see where I have added my adhesive. So on the bottom, I've actually used six millimeter tape because this is gonna get hidden under an octagon so it doesn't matter if the tape protrudes further than the little glue tab. But on all the side pieces, I decided to just use three millimeter tape because that's probably about a four millimeter, five millimeter um, tab there. So I thought three millimeter is gonna be best because it's not gonna be anything overlapping and then leaving sticky inside the cup um, as well. So. This is what you need and then on one of the back of one of these you want to add adhesive as well. So we're going to use this one to stick all the bottoms to to create the outside bottom of the cup and then the one that we've added adhesive to will then sandwich inside the cup once it's all together to hide all these little tabs and make it look really neat from the inside. So firstly the most simple part of it is literally just to like build the net of the, the base of the cup which is literally just putting all of these together to give you your eight panels in a row. Just want to fold that little bit of tape over. So you just want to give yourself all eight panels going around to create the base of the cup. And the way I'm lining this up is obviously you're lining um, a cut edge up to a folded edge but also as you're lining it up keep an eye on this score line here and like the glue bottom of the glue tab there you want them to be as lined up as you can get them as well and that's how you're going to get the the right kind of shape okay and then because this is a symmetrical uh, piece you've got an even number of um, sides we to get the last one to be perfect we can actually just fold, fold it flat um, and so if you were say selling some of these or um, you wanted to make them ahead of time so that you've got them ready for Christmas you could have all of your bases made like this with the two bottoms ready there and then obviously build the lid so you've got all of that more trickier part already done but it would keep them much flatter than having the 3D cups already made up. You can see automatically you've got a nice shape building there. There it looks a little bit square but all you've got to do is just 
um, squidge out those fold lines and you've got that more octagonal shape going on. Then to do the base, um, so I've got all of that red line tape on there, I'm going to take the tape off of all of the tabs just because it makes it a little bit quicker if I don't keep having to stop to take some more tape off but you could do it a couple of tabs at a time if that's um, better for you or you, you can use wet glue for all of this as well and I will be using wet glue when I get to all of the, like the little fiddly um, ledges and stuff that you can that you create with the lid because it is much easier to use wet glue in that case so we've got all of those little glue tabs there, I might fold that over just so it's not in the way and sticking to another tab. And then the way I put the base on is you take your octagon, the one that hasn't got the tape on because this is going to be the bottom, like the outside bottom, put your hand inside and press against with one of your fingers, press against one of these glue tabs and then place one edge of that octagon onto there and press it in place so it's well stuck and then just keep going around the perimeter pressing the next edge onto that base piece. You, I've still got my finger under here this um, ring finger is under here holding it up so it's not sticking where I don't want it to and then you can just go round guiding it round pressing from the inside and from the top and then you can easily get all of that um, bottom area to uh, get adhered in the right position to give you that gorgeous octagonal shape to it and then just keep pressing from the inside make sure all the glue tabs are nicely stuck and then that is the main basis but as you can see you can see all those glue tabs inside uh, which isn't as pretty and actually also on the inside here where you can see these glue tabs you can also cut these panels um, and like stick them across them to make that a stronger bond or to decorate the inside as well depending on who you're giving it to and what you're going to put in it you can easily decorate the inside too and it would kind of disguise those glue tabs a little bit more but to get the piece down in the bottom I've already added red liner tape onto here and then I'm also going to add wet glue onto here too so I'm just going to use the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and the reason why I'm adding this is so that I can get it into the bottom of the box without the red liner tape grabbing as it goes down. You could just use glue on this if you wanted to as well, you don't have to use the tape. Um, I just do it from habit really. So you just want to place it down there. Um, pick a straight side and try and aim for the straight side, one of the straight sides down the bottom. It doesn't always drop down nicely. Oh, it did that time. If it doesn't, just take your um, your pokey tool and you can like move it around a little bit to get it to go down there perfectly. And then I like to use the um, glide folder just to press all the way around the edge of it and in the middle as well, just to get it to stick nicely. And then you've neatened up. So this is basically to neaten the bottom of the inside, but it's also to reinforce the bottom because you've now sandwiched those glue tabs between two pieces of card so rather than um, them just being stuck to the bottom piece and maybe you place something heavy inside but it was sitting more in the middle it, I mean there is a possibility that it could be heavy enough to kind of push the bottom out of the cup but now you've got those um, glue tab sandwich between two pieces that's not going to go anywhere so you can put something heavier and more substantial inside the cup and um, the base should stay intact I just realised one of my oh no it's not, I thought a Nouveau drop was still wet it had a little bit ball of glue on it ok so that is the uh, base of your gorgeous little to go cup and then I'll be back in a second with the lid ok so for the lid like I said earlier we need one of this skinny octagon frame which actually I think is going to be brilliant for your cards um, what a lovely kind of aperture that would make on a card and like having a little frame and having uh, foliage growing around it or some of the Susan Garden Club flowers on it or something I think that would just be really nice for your card making as well because it instantly cuts that frame for you you don't have to put two dies together it instantly cuts that then you also need two of these and then you need four of this piece and four of this piece to create the whole um, cup. 
So firstly, we'll work with these four pieces and these two pieces. So um, folding wise, you don't need to fold this tab. This is just a guide for placing them all next to each other. This is gonna be a flat plane. Once they're both cut together, that's gonna stay flat. So you don't need to fold that score line. Uh, if you see next to the tape, there's a score line there. We're not going to fold that one. We're just using it as a, a marker. And also tape-wise on these, I've put it on that one that we're not going to fold. And then on the other side, you want to put it on these skinny little tabs at the bottom because we're going to fold them under to make it um, stronger. That's how we're going to make it a, like, a nice strong finish on um, this part of the lid. So that's... Um, what that little tab is for so I've been putting glue there like that but you could also use wet glue for that as well so folding wise we're not folding that one and then everything else folds away from you so we're just gonna fold and then I do recommend reinforcing with one of these um, glide folders that tonic do or also they also do this card creaser as well that would work just as well um, but you really want to get nice crisp lines on this. It will give you a much more professional finish once it's done. You don't necessarily have to crease the um, glue tabs with that. Yeah, see, there's also two glue tabs here on them, but I'm going to use wet glue for that because it is much easier to use wet glue. Okay, so we'll do that. Then... We're going to take all four of these, they're all scored exactly the same, and we're going to take this tape off of here, and then take the next one, and if I zoom in a bit, we're lining it up, so we're lining this cut edge up with that score line that we didn't fold along, because it's basically just a guide, and then we'll do the next one. And then the final one is a little bit trickier because we've got to glue onto this one but also glue that one under there as well. So we can take the backing off of both of them and then maybe do this one more in the air. So we're kind of tucking this one underneath but also lining it up on top and then going around and lining that one up too. So that is the basis for the very top of the lid and you can see what I was saying about the four holes but now you take this piece, pick whichever hole that you want, it doesn't matter which one you use and then we're going to line this piece up over the top. Don't worry about lining the hole up exactly because these holes are larger so that you can focus more on getting this panel um, centralised in that octagonal shape perfectly um, like matte and layered on top of it um, so the hole below is slightly bigger to account for that um, you can do this all out of the same colour I just decided for this one that I wanted to do um, some light grey on it to sort of go with the yellow and grey theme that I've been doing um, and for this one I think I'm just going to use some wet glue so you want to put that onto here really because you've got the holes on there you just put some all over and then we could also go around the edge here as well so it's definitely going to stick really nicely and then we can just line that up over the top and because we've used the wet glue we can wiggle it around to make sure it's perfect as well and then we can also put the one on the inside too which will cover up all of this messy looking area. This one you do have to be more careful about lining that hole up um, because otherwise if it was off you'd be able to see it from the front, you see? But you just, so you just want to line that up a little bit carefully on the inside. But again, if we're using uh, wet glue it should be easier to do that. Actually, do I want definitely? Yeah, no, I will do that now. So for this one we can just glue onto here because um, we're covering up those holes and they're already covered up on the other side so we don't have to worry about glue, glue leaking through <laughs> okay so if we line that one up press that in place then for the next couple of steps you're going to want some little pegs I think because it is much easier 
to put all of this together with some little pegs to hold the little glue tabs in place. So these are just like little craft pegs. I think I got them from the works, but they're just little ones that you're supposed to use as like part of a project to add a cool little element. Um, but I just use them for pegging things um, when they're drying. I do, I do also use um, these as well, which I think are from... Um, I think they were a freebie on a knitting magazine. But they're just like little um, strong clips, but they're kind of a little bit too big for this. These little tiny wooden ones have a really small like little jaw to them, so they don't peg on to too much. They're really nice and small for this kind of a project. So we're going to need some of those and then uh, we're also going to need um, glue. I've put some in a fine tip bottle so that it's just a little bit easier to just apply a tiny little dab onto here. So we're going to put a little tiny dab on there and then we're pulling that straight down. So this is going to be a right angle from the lid. The lid's going to stay flat and then this is going to come down at a right angle and you want to pinch it together so that it's going to hold and then take one of these pegs and just go in from the bottom and peg that one up as well. Then we also have tiny tabs. Because of the way the die is made, you've got a larger tab and then a tiny tab. So this is slightly more tricky to um, peg into place, but you just got to make sure you put the peg so you're actually gripping it onto that little tab that's underneath. So you can just look underneath and make sure it's pegged in the right place. So you just want to con um, complete that all the way around. Wipe away any excess glue. And peg it into place again. So this, it shouldn't take too long for these little tabs to dry but it's just much easier if you have pegged them because you know that when you come back to do the next bit they're not going to have moved and then accidentally stuck um, at a jaunty angle. You're going to make sure that they're staying at their sort of right angle to the lid. We could do both of these at the same time. Okay, and then um, we can put the glue away. And then every other tab around here doesn't actually have pegs on it. So the two tabs are sticking to the same tab, so we can actually, in between the pegs, whilst those ones are drying, we can actually start sticking these little tabs down as well. Because we're going to do that all the way around, but we might as well leave those pegs to dry as long as they can. So every other, so there'll be four of them, every other one around here, we can take that tape off that I showed you earlier, how I'd put it on the inside of the, or the wrong side of the die cut, and then we can just... Uh, fold all of those round so they're already um, stuck and we just leave the little pegs on there for a little bit longer and then come back and do that to those other four sides as well. So while that is drying we might as well leave it for as long as we can so that it's nicely stuck we can move on to this piece which creates the kind of lip of the coffee cup and also the sort of ledge of how it is going to stick or like sit on top of the base of the coffee cup. So we need four of these pieces, I'll show you how to fold it in a second, and then glue wise or tape wise, you want tape on the professional side of these two pieces because this is going to stick up inside the piece that we just created, and um, that's how those two pieces are going to join together. And then you also want to do the same thing on the back there on those two little curved tabs because that's going to reinforce that bottom edge. And then also we've got three little glue tabs which we're going to add wet glue to again and use the little pegs to hold them. So um, to fold all of this, again, uh, it's almost all folding away from us. So let's do all of the ones that do fold away from us first. So that is that bottom edge. 
and the glue tabs as well but we don't really need to burnish those and then the next one also folds away but the one where we have put that tape on folds towards us because that's going to go upwards and stick inside the bit we've just made Okay, so that is all the different pieces. Now we've got to start sticking this together. So I think I'm going to stick all of this larger tab here, this larger, more square tab. We're going to stick all of them together first to sort of build the um, eight sided piece that we're going to use to create the box. I think maybe I did use tape on the other ones, but I haven't on this one. But glue and tape can be used interchangeably just whatever you find easier we do also want to fold that line, I didn't fold that on that one and then last one and then the next tab you'll be able to see how this is all coming together. So that is creating our octagonal lid piece. And then we can start um, sticking together these other pieces. I might actually put pegs on those pieces that we just did, just to make sure it's going to be nicely stuck. And then we've got to do the in-betweens of those, because that was only four um, glues, but there's eight sides. So we've also got these tiny little um, triangular tabs to do as well. To give us all of the eight sides. You can never have too many pegs, or never put on too many pegs. You might as well hold it. Um, in place even if it doesn't really need it and actually a top tip is if you're unsure about how something is going to go together um, you could if you wanted to if, say you've spent a lot of time um, die cutting things and sticking it all together and then you're like oh I'm not really sure how it goes together and you don't want to do it wrong because you might ruin all that hard work that you've just um, done to decorate it nicely you can actually try to pin a project together just with the pegs as well I have done that in the past um, just to, to test how something's going to go together you can actually just use the pegs to try and hold it together and see if you're liking what's happening with it as well which is good so while that is drying, we can go back to the first piece. Sorry, there's a lot of switching backwards and forwards, but you'll probably do it like this um, when you're making it at home as well, because you've got the drying time to get all the different pieces to um, be nicely stuck. And now we can go and take the other four bits of tape off to fold the inside pieces down to give it a nice strong edge. Okay, so now we can fold these down and again I mean you might want to um, put pegs on that to make sure it's definitely stuck as well but I think it's going to have stayed nicely for this one but that is the top of the lid so then we're going to have the next piece down as well and then we'll use this piece to neaten off the next layer down and so from the top you will see that um, little dotty pattern that I've created around that ring so this is probably dry enough now we might be able to actually we probably can get the last ones done um, without taking those pegs off so there's just four more little glue tabs to do uh, with the wet glue 
So we've got these little triangle ones inside here. And now this piece that we've already stuck together, that is going to be going up straight. And this piece is going to be at a 90 degree angle. So when this is properly together, you're going to have a 90 degree angle there. That's what we're aiming for. So if I put that one together and get a peg, I think this is slightly trickier to get the peg in there for this one but you can do it and we've only got four of these to do which is nice because um, two of them are already joined so you haven't got that join there but if this does look a little bit messy on the top that's what that ring is for it's to reinforce it and also just to make it look neater and more professional as well Definitely is a little bit trickier to get the pegs in this one, but I think it's definitely worth trying to peg it if you can. And I had a f I have a feeling you can't quite, no, maybe we can't use the pegs really, because um, you can't quite get this to go flat. Or maybe you can. No, maybe you can. Okay, so we'll do the third one. It's just a little bit... Um, because of the way you've put the pegs in, the, the piece that you want to then become flat and at that 90 degree angle doesn't want to stay at that angle. Maybe if I fold, oh yeah, if I do that, if I fold that flat down, that should be good. Okay, and then the final one, right under there. So if you fold that glue tab down, that's got the tape on, it makes it much easier to get the peg in there. Okay, so we'll just leave that to dry and then we'll finish off the lid. Okay, so that looks like it is dry now. So we can take off all of these pegs and we can finally put the rest of the lid together. So you can see it's not too... Um, it's not too complicated, it's just sort of a bit fiddly to put together, which is why I wanted to do a separate construction video for it, just in case um, it was helpful for anybody. Um, so for the next bit of the lid, we can stick all of these pieces up um, inside, which um, reinforces that bottom edge of the lid, which is going to be... Um, locking on to the sort of lip of the, the bottom portion but it also covers um, the glue tabs and like reinforces them as well it's going to cover the little triangle you can see that one just covered um, the rectangular tab there as well so it's it's reinforcing in two different ways really okay and again you can do this with wet glue and peg it to dry if you want to Okay, so we can press all of those inside. And then we can attach the top piece. So this top piece is just going to go on here and that is going to create the really cool sort of ledge effect for the lid. Um, and it really gives that kind of takeaway coffee cup sort of a feel. So to do this, um, you can you saw before where I'd added all of the tape on there. So the way I did this was I took the backing off of all of these to make it easier. But again, you can do it a few at a time if you'd rather. Or you can do it with wet glue as well. And then, so they don't all accidentally start sticking before it's in place, bend them downwards. I mean, or just flat, really. 
so that they're not all sticking and then we're going to do what we did for the base of the main portion and put our finger behind one of them and start sticking that one and then you can place it down in place and from underneath you're just going along and pressing the tabs into place to secure it all down you can always do opposites first if you want to to get it nice and central whatever way works best for you and then you can check from the inside that you've pressed them all down nicely and then there we have our lid it's really sturdy now as well because we've got all those layers of cardstock building it all together and everything so that is the the lid but to give it a bit of extra decoration or to hide these kind of seams going around here we can also add this piece on which will slot nicely over the top of that hexagonal top lid piece and um, we'll add that extra decoration around there so I have been doing this with wet glue because it is easier to manoeuvre it a little bit So we want to start sort of in one place, get it all the way around the hex or the ox octagon and then we can just press it down. It's a nice snug fit as well so it really does neaten it up nicely and you can always press top and bottom to get that to stick nicely as well. So that is the gorgeous lid and now we can put the lid on the box. And there we go, we've got our takeaway cup in funky kind of colours for this one because I decided to do yellow and grey for something different. But what else does a takeaway coffee cup need? It needs the little sleeve that goes around it or the, the cosy um, to stop you from burning your hands. And you also get the dye to do that which is brilliant. So I've just done mine out of the light grey to kind of tie the, the lid down into the rest of the um, cup. So you need four of these four of these pieces and then you can decorate all four of them you can decorate one of them you don't have to decorate them at all one of the ones that I'll show you in my up close video um, I cut from craft card and then use one of those small ball tools and just drew lines up and down it also it kind of gave that illusion of a corrugated cardstock um, as well which looked really nice so to do this you just want to add the tape to all the little glue tabs that are on the ends and then just attach them all together and this is only four sided but obviously the cup is eight sided so it kind of um, sits differently on it and you can use, you can leave it so that it can come off or I think on both of the ones I did before I um, added some foam tape behind it so that it would stay stuck in the right place where I wanted it to be. I think one of them I actually threaded the tag around it as well. Um, I made the other ones uh, quite a while ago now, a few weeks ago, um, so I can't 100% remember but in that up close video there will be a clip of me showing them. So you've got this little square piece um, and all you want to do is just place that in there and then pull it up the cup and actually with these Nouveau drops on there that will actually keep it in place really nicely so I shouldn't need to stick this one and you can tilt it so that the words are kind of going across like this or you could have it so that the words are coming more across one panel and half going across the two panels either side as well whichever way you want to do it and um, you can stick that on as well if you want to and then you can also use the other little dies from the set um, if you want to create like a little gift tag um, you could stick two of the scallop circles back to back and like have the smaller circles and then have one of the embossed sentiments on that as well and you could just sandwich a piece of baker's twine between this or ribbon or you could use a hole punch and cut a hole through it if you want to um, but yeah I hope you enjoyed this construction video showing you how to um, put this gorgeous coffee cup together and hopefully I, I made it you know easier for you to follow you do get the instructions so there's no need for me to have made this video but um, Sometimes it's just nicer to watch someone put it together on video rather than having to follow a sheet of paper. 
um, so I thought some of you might appreciate it. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the construction and um, don't forget to watch the sped up version seeing how I created all of these little panels and the matching card to go with it and um, also the up close video where I will show you in detail the die set and also some other samples that I created as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!